So Michel Tim then, the trainer of Andreas Katelnik, like so many successful uh, German fighters, by the way. So here is the uh, halfway point, then round seven of this uh, scheduled 12 round European Light Waterway title fight. The champion, the reigning and defending champion, Junior Witter, resplendent in silver trunks here against his. Uh, well, he's, he's a bit of a. a dark horse, really, Katelnik, isn't he? Yeah, which had allowed him to come back into the fight in this round, uh, in the round previous, I should say. So this round, I would expect Witter to, to re-stamp his authority and um, you know, tr definitely try and penetrate that guard. Well, we do think, um, I think, I speak for you as well, Duke, that, that Witter could be hitting more firmly. Certainly, I, I think he should step in behind his punches now, you know, and um, really try to shake this guy up a little bit. I mean, without taking a chance, he doesn't take chances where he's he's a very calculated, very cool boxer. Well, no, oh, nice bit of work there for Katelnik. Finish that exchange off with a lovely left hook. <laughs> As I said in the round previous, which has allowed Katelnik some confidence now. So now he can he, he really feels that he can push Witter back and get off with some punches like he just did then. I'd like to see Witter really stamp his authority on this round and turn this fight around, whereby he hurts this guy. But it's ironic, you know, that uh, the junior's missing and falling short with his punches, whereas Katelnik is throwing far fewer for actually making them count. Absolutely. This is exactly what he's doing in this round. Witter's throwing more shots, but obviously not, not landing too many. And Katelnik's just landing the more telling blows. Nice left hook again there for Katelnik. Well, for me, the first genuine round of the challenger is going to win, providing, of course, it stays like this. Which has just allowed him just a little bit too much respect and just allowed him to get into this to get into this round. Of course, it could be, Duke, that, um, that Junior wants to get inside and have a bit of a row here so he can use his power. Uh, I'm not so sure, Steve. You know, he's, it's not his style. Witter just doesn't take chances. You're absolutely right. So a tidy, compact, orthodox style here for Katelnik. Uh, completely different, of course, to Junior Winter. Lands up left hook again. I think it's the fourth or fifth time in this round that that sweeping left hook has got through on target. He will be saying to himself now, OK, I know this guy takes a reasonably good shot. I know I might have to do a few rounds, so I'm going to pace myself. You know, I'm not going to just go, go to town on him. And I think, I think that's what he's doing. Yes, and it would be a disaster if Witter were to lose this. The world would fall apart, wouldn't it? I don't think he's in any danger of losing it, at least not right now. It would take a knockout from Katelnik for that to happen. Bunches put the combinations together. Yep, if the left one don't get you, then the right one will, as the song says. And we're coming out now for round eight of the scheduled 12-round uh, contest. And I'll tell you what, Chick, it's zip by, isn't it? It certainly has. But we've got a, a five-point gap here, at least I have anyway, in favour of Junior Witter. And uh, let's just see how this eighth round develops. There's your scorecard, Duke, 69 65. Four points for you. I think Witter's just decided to shake alive a little bit now. He's, he knows he's maybe he had to cut the rounds off quite deliberately, I'm not so sure, but, you know, he's, he realises that he's let this guy back in, and I think he wants to just start, you know, setting down in his punches now, hurt this guy a little bit, try and back him up. Oh, nice little right there, followed by a half a left hook from Katelnik. And fighters do take it the odd round off, don't they? Nice left hook again on the challenger. They, they do when it's a hard-fought pace, but this isn't a hard-fought pace fight. So, uh, whatever, re whatever reasons he has, uh, Witter, for taking the, the foot off the gas, uh, it's beyond me. Well, my prediction of a five-round finish was uh, absolute nonsense, blown out of the water. But uh, still, there's, there's an awful lot of room here for Katelnik to have to make up. Well, I don't see Katelnik clawing back the points deficit. I think he's too far behind for that, even at this stage. Well, you've got him four behind with five to play, so it's possible mathematically. I've got him five behind with five to play, so it's you know the best they can do for me is a draw. He's not going to outbox Witter for another four rounds. Uh. Well, any chance he could knock him out, Duke? 
Well, he hasn't proven that so far. I mean, he's, he's clipped with it once or twice, but nothing to suggest that he could knock him down or take him out of his stride. And well, there's nothing really on his record to suggest he's that kind of hitter either. No. 11 wins out of 24 uh, victories uh, inside the limit, and not against named opponents, really. No, he's, he's not a devastating puncher by any stretch of the imagination. Well, Julian, they watch to uh, want to watch his head. The referee seems to be intervening now more often uh, against Witty, you know, for like little infringements, and um, uh, he's not entirely blameless. That's true. Another fairly quiet round this for Witter. Um, as Katelnik just gets industrious and starts building up. Right over the top there at the end of Katelnik. Looks like he's done his homework, doesn't it? He certainly has. So what he's doing now is letting Witter, Witter get off of his punches and then he starts back his quick combination. Once he's got Witter in sight and in range. High tight guard, backs him up, there you go, little one-two, and there's the little combo. Well, I tell you what, not a bad round this now for Katelnik, possibly thinking that it'd be a fight of two halves, he'd lose the first six and possibly win the next six. Oh, yeah, it's not a bad, a bad assessment. Too late for me, though, I'm afraid, for Katelnik, as you so rightly say, to make up the deficit in what's left. But Katelnik can't afford to take chances and start dropping heat hands. Well, I think he's still won that round, though, Duke. And, uh, well, the gap now getting slightly less here. Yes, well, let's see what the Ingle dynasty have to say about that. Um, well, we've got four rounds left to play here. I've got a four-point gap, you've got a three-point gap. So it's still possible mathematically for Katana to get something out of this. I'm not so sure Witt is going to let him. You know, Witt is, a, as I said before, he's very, very cute, and he's not going to let this guy, you know, just walk, come in and walk away with the championship. So I think, for, for my money, I think Witter can meet him punch for punch any time he's ready and get the result. But of course, Duke, it does depend on the three judges we have sitting around the ringside here. Um, not one Brit in sight, by the way, so there'll be no sympathy here for Junior Witter. You've got a good point there, you know. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think Witter's winning the fight quite, quite comfortably. I really do. He hasn't really put a foot wrong on that. Shorty Townex not making it easy for him, but, you know, with being European champion, as I've said before, it's like being champion of half the world, and he's got a genuine world rating. You know, the pair of them have, so, you know, this is not only... A, Beautiful shot, there for Katana getting in. Yeah, these are good shots from Katana. This isn't just a European title fight, it's also a world ranking on the line. Absolutely right. Well, I've got to say here, Katonic really showed a great deal of metal there to, uh, to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Witter and bang him with some cracking punches. Well, they were two good shots by Katonic. Witter needs to inject some real good urgency into his work, find a way through. He hasn't found a way through uh, that guard pretty much all night. Yeah, sure, he's been pot-shotting quite well, but... just needs to, needs to just really stamp his authority on this fight. Well, I'll tell you something, you know, uh, Duke, if, uh, if Katelnik could put a combination together and put Junior on the floor, what a difference that would make, psychologically. Well, certainly would. I can't see Witter getting sloppy, though. You don't often see him get hit like this, do you? Well, you know, this is, this is world-class boxing now. He's gone past the, the British stage and even the, uh, the, the, the Commonwealth stages into the you know, European, you know, as I said before, there's a world ranking at stake here. These are both world ranked fighters. Well, I've got to say, a very, very intelligent approach to boxing here by Katelnik. Um, not having a pop by any means at Julian Witter. But as this one's gone on, I think Katelnik's learned slightly more about it. And again, lands are right over the top there. Katelnik getting through a lot more now in this round. It's a good round for him. Indeed it is. Well, we had him four behind coming into this. He'll be three behind with three to play going out of it. And, uh, you know, he, he's, he's boxing an intelligent, aware contest, isn't he? Yeah. Well, like you said before, he's probably seen this fight and said to himself, you know what, I might lose the first early rounds, but after that, I'm going to start calling.